Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Readout on a very big night in news. Special Counsel Jack Smith has filed his brief with the Supreme Court opposing Donald Trump's quest for total immunity. Republicans are licking their wounds after yet another election defeat last night. And Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen joins me after his powerful floor speech accusing Israel of a textbook war crime in Gaza. But we begin tonight with Peak America. Today, in downtown Kansas City, Missouri, a Valentine's Day mass shooting erupted as the city was celebrating its third Super Bowl title in five seasons. A tragic, but not so surprising end to what should have been a dynasty cementing moment for Kansas City football. Instead, today is seared in American memory for a very different and gruesome reason. Police say shots were fired as soon as the rally concluded this afternoon. The shooting occurred west of Union Station near the end of the rally that followed the parade. 22 people were injured, including some children. Three people are detained. At least one person is dead. Super Bowl Sunday wasn't too long ago. You can count the days on one hand. An overtime thriller where quarterback Patrick Mahomes led another comeback on the NFL's biggest stage in America's showcase capital. We all watched it, some of us for Usher, some of y'all for Taylor Swift, because Super Bowl Sunday is about more than just football. It's about coming together. It's about repping your team, your city, your state. And that was what today was supposed to be about. Have you ever been in a town that just won the Super Bowl? It is intense. The entire population is out, families, little kids, seniors. This was the massive crowd today in downtown Kansas City, reportedly up to a million people out to celebrate, to be a part of something special. But sadly, being out in public is not so safe for many Americans. Because in America, football isn't king. Guns are king. If the presence of lots of guns in lots of hands made you safer, Missouri would be the safest place on earth. Missouri has appallingly weak gun laws and one of the country's highest gun death rates. Since 2017, the state has allowed people to carry concealed, loaded firearms in public, without a background check or permit. Its gun law strength rank is 48 out of 50, according to Giffords. Its Giffords scorecard grade is F. The state does not enforce universal background checks, gun owner licensing, or extreme risk protection orders. There are no domestic violence, domestic violence gun laws or assault weapons restrictions. No large capacity magazine bans or waiting periods. Missouri is also a shall-issue state, which means if you want a gun, you shall be sold it. Basically, no matter what. And you can openly carry or conceal carry that firearm, or a bunch of them, without obtaining a permit. Missouri also has a stand-your-ground law. In, in case you decide to use your gun to kill someone, you're good in most cases. Let's just take a hard look at this terrifying tableau of America where thousands of human beings wearing chief's jerseys, united as fans, as a city, as Americans, only to hear multiple shots coming from the crowd. We've seen this scene so many times. The panic and the fear. The children lost in the chaos, looking for their parents. The people jumping barricades, running, dispersing, hiding. Today also marks the six-year anniversary of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School that left 17 people, mostly children, dead. Six years ago to the day, and so little has changed. In fact, it's only gotten worse. There are now even Americans who have experienced more than one mass shooting, like these parade attendees who experienced gun violence today, as well as at a school years ago. It is very scary. I mean, this is our second situation. Um, I don't know, you know, a while back, about Highlands Elementary. Uh, eight years ago, we were at work at Highlands Elementary where there was an active shooter across the street, oh. and we had to race all the kids to the gym and, you know, wait for the parents to come and get them. So being with my daughter, making sure she's safe is my number one priority. And coming down here to celebrate and then in an, on such a sad note, devastating. Joining me now is Manuel Abarca IV, a legislator in Jackson County, Missouri, which is home to Kansas City. He was at the parade today with his young daughter, Camilla, who also joins us. Former Missouri Senator and MSNBC political analyst Claire McCaskill 
and Brittany Packnett Cunningham, a former member of President Obama's 21st Century Policing Task Force and the host of the Undistracted Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I do want to start with you, Representative Abarca. Um, talk about what happened today. And your daughter is adorable, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're glad we're here today. Um, it was celebratory uh, social hour. Uh, it was uh, confetti and smiles and sunshine. Uh, and then, unfortunately, in the flash of a second, it was screams and terror uh, as we ran into Pierpont's uh, restaurant that's right off the, the inner part of Union Station uh, to hide in the bathroom, uh, not knowing what uh, or if we were going to leave it. Um, thankfully, uh, Camila was pretty brave about the whole thing, but, um, you know, we're glad we're here today. You know, what's tragic, uh, and especially seeing your, your baby there, is that, you know, kids her age, as well as kids, my kids' age, my kids are in their 20s, they're growing up with this as a part of their way of life, that run, hide, shoot is a part of what they learn in school. It's just standard education for a third grader, a fourth grader, a preschooler, and you can't go to a parade. You're in the legislative business. You're in the government business. Is there any desire among your fellow legislators to make children live a different kind of life than this one? Absolutely. And I think it's something that I'm taking uh, at heart immediately. As soon as uh, we were clear and safe, I texted our general counsel and told them I need that gun legislation immediately for Monday's meeting. I don't care what stands in our way. And as I was leaving uh, with my colleagues at the state legislature, at the city council, we all agreed it's time for us to act. As Democrats, we must act in a state that is a petri dish for terrible gun laws. So we, we are going to take a stand here. And uh, the time for prayers is certainly there because I do know several of the victims. Um, but we're going to act. They're, they're, they're not going to be lost in vain. And, and I guess the most important question is, will the people of your state act? Because they are reelecting Republicans who refuse to do anything about gun violence, who make it easier and easier for even the worst people to get their hands on firearms, as many as they want with no permit. Um, Missouri ranks, as I mentioned, near the bottom in terms of gun safety in this country. And most of the deaths from uh, firearms in your state are suicides. Um, yeah. Do you see any movement among the voters of your state to elect different kinds of elected officials? Yeah, I think there were nearly a million voters there today, I hope. Uh, the reality is the governor mm. was also present. Many Republican state reps were there. If they're not seeing this now as an opportunity to change their ways, uh, hopefully we're willing to kick them out. And I will gladly lead that effort, uh, as I know Senator McCaskill has done in the past. Jackson County Legislator Manuel Abarca IV and his adorable daughter, thank you very much for being here. And I'm so glad that you and your baby are safe. Thank you. Thank you. All right, joining me now is Claire McCaskill as well as Brittany Packnett Cunningham. I'm going to start with you, Claire, because you are a statewide legislator in the state of Missouri. Uh, I, I know it's supposed to be Missouri, so, you know, I, I'm going I'm to use my Midwest uh, accent and say Missouri. Um, why won't legislators in the state of Missouri change it? Well, you have to understand that Missouri is dominated by MAGA. Um, Missouri is dominated by a Republican Party that sees absolutely no problem with telling a 12-year-old girl that she must give birth to her stepfather's baby after she has been victimized by incest for a year, but tells her 12-year-old brother, yeah, you can carry an AR-15 openly, publicly, anywhere you want in Missouri, and the police can't even stop you or take it away from you. That's the state we're living in. That's how extreme our laws are. And they are in a race to make it even more extreme every single day. I mean, Joy, put think about this for a minute, especially in light of Children's Mercy calling for parents to please contact them because maybe one of the many children they're treating for gunshot wounds at Children's Mercy, which is just a few blocks from Union Station, uh, that maybe their children are there and their parents haven't been able to find them. Just keep in mind that there is a bill put on the floor in the House of Representatives in Missouri that said, you know, we're going to ban children from openly carrying weapons in public places without adult supervision, right? Now, what do you mm -hmm. think? 
probably 90% of America supports that, 95% of America supports that. Guess what happened? The Republicans in Missouri voted it down. They wanted to make sure that children could openly carry any weapon they wanted, no permit, no training, without adult supervision in public places. So no wonder the governor is running in fear today at this rally with his security detail why children are getting shot up right around the corner.